So in this module, we're going to discuss the pretty good measurement. This is a very simple but very powerful idea that's been useful all across quantum information theory, not only cryptography, but also, for instance, analysis of algorithms or quantum channel theory. It's very useful because it answers, or at least it helps answer, it gives a pretty good answer to the following very general question, which is, given an arbitrary family of density matrices, what is the best measurement that one can perform of these states in order to distinguish them? So let's look at this question. Imagine that you're given a family of density matrices, rho x. Actually, let's not say density matrices. These might not be normalized. So they're positive semi-definite, but they might not have trace 1. And the question is, what is the best measurement that can be performed on one of these density matrices chosen at random with probability proportional to its trace that lets us recover the index x of the density matrix. So it's important to make the figure of merit sufficiently precise. So what we're trying to achieve is to maximize the following objective function. We want to maximize the sum over all possible x of the trace of mx rho x over all possible measurements, generalized measurements, p of ems, over all p of m mx on system E. And just to remind you, the definition of a p of m is that these operators mx should be positive semi-definite and should sum to identity on E when I sum over all x. Right? So this expression here that we're trying to maximize is the probability that given the state rho x with probability trace of rho x, the measurement m performed on the state returns outcome x. We're trying to maximize that probability. Now this is an expression that you've already encountered. It's exactly the guessing probability of x given e, which you saw when you discovered the min entropy. So the quantity that we're trying to estimate is 2 to the minus min entropy of x given e. But what we want here is not to compute the quantity itself, but we're interested in what is the optimal measurement? What is the measurement that achieves this optimal guessing probability? So this problem is hard in general. There is one easy case, which is the case where the number of possible x is 2. In that case, we can solve everything. Let me do it for you. It won't take long. So we have two states, rho 0 and rho 1, and we're trying to maximize trace of m0 rho 0 plus trace of m1 rho 1. Now I'm going to rewrite this in a little bit of a strange way. I can rewrite it as half trace of m0 plus m1 times rho 0 plus rho 1 plus a half trace of m0 minus m1 times rho 0 minus rho 1. Why did I do this? Because then the first expression using that m is a p of m, here I get the identity, here I get the sum of the two states, and if I assume that their traces are normalized as probabilities, I'll get a density matrix rho that has trace 1, so I get a half here, plus, and then the second expression here, a half times the trace of m0 minus m1, rho 0 minus rho 1. And now because m is a p of m, this operator here is always an operator m that is at most identity and at least minus identity. So this expression is at most what? The trace distance between rho 0 and rho 1. So this is at most a half plus a half times the trace distance between rho 0 and rho 1. And it is achieved by choosing the measurement operator, which is the measurement operator that achieves the trace distance. And that is the measurement operator that projects on the positive eigenspace of the difference between rho 0 and rho 1. So achieved, I can write this as rho 0 minus rho 1 plus. So projection on the positive eigenspace and m1 to be rho 0 minus rho 1 minus, projection on the negative eigenspace. So for the case where there is only two x's that we're trying to distinguish between, we have a simple closed form solution to the problem. General case is a little bit more complicated, but let's think about it. So first, let's consider the classical case where rho e is just a number, the probability of x. So I would take rho x e equals px. That's just a number between 0 and 1. So in this case, we know what is the optimal guessing measurement. We would guess x 0 all the time 
such that the probability px0 is the maximum probability, right? We just guess what is the most likely outcome, and this will be the best guessing measurement. Now, what the pretty good measurement will do in this case is it will say, let's not guess the optimal x, let's do something a little bit worse, but not too much worse, which is guess according to the probability distribution px itself. That is, the only thing we know is the probability distribution p, we're just going to output a random guess distributed according to this distribution. So the pgm, pretty good measurement in this case, will be guess x with probability px. So what this corresponds to is taking a measurement operator, which is just one dimensional, equal to px. You can check that this is a one dimensional p of m. It's positive and because these are probabilities, they sum to one. What is the success probability of this guessing strategy? is going to be equal to the sum over x of trace of mx times cox. And here I'm being very pedantic because these are just uh, real numbers. So there's not really any trace, it's a product. And what I really get is the sum over x of px squared. Now the sum over x of px squared, this is certainly larger than the sum over x of px everything squared. And of course the sum over x of px is greater than the larger px. So this is greater than the maximum over all x of px squared, which is the guessing probability. And so you get an inequality here that says that our guessing strategy that corresponds to outputting a random x distributed according to px, its success probability in guessing x is not the optimum, but it's not too far. It's at least the square, forgot to copy the square here, there. It's at least the square of the guessing probability not too far off. In particular, if you take minus logs, then the same inequality can be rewritten as saying that the min entropy of x given e is at least, well, in general, it's equal to minus log of p guess, and because of the factor 2 here, we guessed minus a half times log of the success probability of the PGM. So this success probability, this sum of squares, gives us a lower bound on the min entropy that's accurate up to a factor half, which is not bad in general. So now let's see how we do the same thing in the quantum case. So in that case, we have side information or quantum states, ho x e, and we'd like to do exactly the same. That is, we want to guess ho x with probability ho x. Uh, what does that mean? Well, I have to define a measurement, so I can't just say ho x e because the problem, these are positive, this is okay. The problem is that when I sum over all x, I get a density matrix. I should get the identity. So we have ho e, this is equal to the sum over x of ho x e. Well, I can get a measurement operator simply by normalizing. So what I could do is introduce here ho e minus a half, here ho e minus a half, because I sandwiched left and right by the same operator, I get mx's that are still positive semi-definite. And now moreover, when I sum over all x of mx, the sum over all x goes inside and I get inverse square root of ho times ho times inverse square root of ho, I get identity. So in this way, I've defined a valid p of m. And because it's a p of m, it defines for me a guessing strategy. I'll just measure using the mx and output the result of my measurement. Now the question is, how good is this strategy? So let's instead start off with the optimal guessing probability and try to compare it to the guessing probability that arises from it, the pretty good measurement. So the optimal guessing probability will be equal to sum over x of trace of, and then I could call it opt x ho x e, where opt x is any p of m that achieves the optimum guessing probability. Now, in order to have the pretty good measurement arise, let's introduce some artificial factors in this expression. So I can write it as the trace of, and let's put here a ho, I'll drop the subscript uh, e, it'll be easier. Let me put ho a quarter, opt x, ho a quarter, and then cancel it out, ho minus a quarter, ho x e, ho minus a quarter. Right, so what did I do? These to ho in the middle cancel each other, and these two on the outside also cancel each other using cyclicity of the trace. Now we come to the main step of the analysis, which is to apply the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. So that's a tiny bit technical, but I'll tell you what the result is. 
So you apply the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality and what you get are two terms. The first term will be sum over x of trace of. My Cauchy-Schwarz inequality, I apply it by splitting these two matrices and these two matrices here. So here I will get the first matrix repeated twice, which I can rewrite as so whole quarter opt x, a quarter times whole quarter, so I'll get a half opt x whole quarter. That's for the first term. For the second term, we get something very similar, the sum over x, so a very similar expression here. So now let's bound each of these two expressions separately. The first expression, I can use that these POVM operators, they're less than identity. So what I will get for the first term is sum over x of trace of opt x, and then I have whole half, whole quarter, whole quarter, so this gives me whole. That's for the first term. And then the second term, what do I recognize? If I move using cyclicity of the trace this last whole quarter to the left, I have whole minus a half, whole x, whole minus a half. What do I recognize? My measurement operator is for the pretty good measurement. So this is mx, and so this second expression will just be sum over x of trace of mx whole x, everything raised to the half. Now the first term, and we're almost there, is at most one, because sum over x of opt x is identity, Ho is the density matrix, it has trace 1, so I just get 1, times, and the second expression is exactly the success probability of the pretty good measurement. So I get probability of success of the pretty good measurement. And this is our result. It's saying that the optimum guessing probability, p guess, is at most the square root of the success probability of the pretty good measurement. If we invert the inequality, square everything, we get the same inequality as we had on the previous slide that the success probability of the pretty good measurement is at least the square of the success probability of the optimum guessing measurement. So now while in the case of purely classical side information th this was not so impressive, here in the case of quantum side information, arbitrary quantum states rho xe, it's going to be a very useful inequality. The problem is that the optimum guessing measurement in general is very hard to write down. It's something that depends on the state's rho x. We don't have a very nice expression for it. The pretty good measurement doesn't do as well, but it doesn't do too bad either. We have a precise inequality, and it has a very simple form. In particular, it depends in a very easy, simple way on the rho x. It's a linear function of these rho x. And that's going to be the most important thing that we're going to use when we take advantage of the form of this pretty good measurement to analyze the two universal hashing based extractor in the context of quantum side information.